I'm George Curtis. Welcome to It's Your Law. Each week it's my privilege to bring guests that teach all of us about the law or open our minds a little bit to another point of view. We sometimes talk about people who make the law, break the law, judges, defense lawyers, prosecutors, family court commissioners, because the law is just some writing on a piece of paper. And the courthouse is just a building. None of that is self-executing. In order to make it work, it takes people, responsible people who know what the responsibility is and who represent other people in working the machinery toward the end, the legal end, that they have in mind. In that particular machine work are the judges. We have six judges here in Winnebago County. Each one has a circuit with a number, Circuit Judge Branch 1, Branch 2, Branch 3. And these are elected people. It's a nonpartisan office, so they're not running as a Republican or a Libertarian or a Democrat. They're running on their qualifications, which is often confusing to people, especially with the political turmoil we have on our particular uh, sites at this particular moment, uh, everybody seems to have to have a label. And I don't think that our circuit judges want a label, deserve a label, or really are required to take on a label. They're running for office based on their qualifications to serve you and to serve me and all the other citizens. We have a couple of people who are going to be up for election for circuit judge branch six. I think it's the 5th of April. It's awfully important, and yet elections at this time of the year, very few people vote. I want you to meet one of the candidates who was the leading vote getter in the primary, and his name is Dan Bissett. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We got you up nice and early today. How do you like that, Dan? That's fine. <laughs> Don't mind getting up early and getting the day started. Well, now you're a candidate uh, for judge, and you're out there campaigning. I see your signs up and down the roads, and uh, I have received some literature in the mail of uh, many people who endorse you, uh, past judges, uh, attorneys, uh, citizens, uh, uh, officials, the county board, and that sort of thing. It means that you're known, you're recognized, and you're working like a dog. I'm trying to, yes, definitely. Uh, I have a lot of endorsements. Uh, judge Schmidt, who had been the uh, judge in Branch 6 for nearly 20 years, is my treasurer. Uh, judge Hawley, the current uh, judge in Branch 6, is uh, also on my campaign committee and is an endorser. Judge Crane, a longtime Winnebago County judge, is uh, also endorsing me, as well as numerous other county officials, Diane Fremgen, Barry Busby, Mike Brooks, uh, as well as uh, over 100 Winnebago County practicing attorneys, uh, law enforcement, and many community members. Well, of course, you uh, know the lawyers. You've probably had as much experience with the Winnebago County lawyers as anybody. Why don't you tell our viewers about that? I have uh, 19 years of experience uh, as an attorney, uh, the last 12 of which have been as a court commissioner, making uh, judicial uh, decisions on a daily basis, uh, make decisions in everything from speeding cases all the way up to murder cases uh, involving family law disputes, civil disputes, mental health cases, elder law, probate cases. Uh, so I make literally hundreds of decisions on a weekly basis. Well, you certainly do. Uh, that job has always amazed me. Uh, it, it's a job that I wouldn't want and wouldn't even claim I could do because give us a little bit of an idea of the variety of legal decisions you have to make in a typical week as a court commissioner. I make uh, decisions uh, involving criminal matters, uh, initial appearances, preliminary examinations, uh, juvenile hearings, detention reviews, initial appearances, uh, whether kids are going to stay in secure detention or go home, whether abused or neglected children should be placed in a foster home or, or go back to the home. Uh, I make decisions involving civil matters, family court matters, uh, uh, mental health cases. Uh, I'm the probate court commissioner, so I make uh, probate cases. Well, just as an example, if people have a dispute, let's say over money, usually it is over money. <laughs> uh, or <they> principal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But, uh, yeah, they, maybe somebody bought a car and it wasn't as represented, at least in the purchaser's uh, point of view. And the, the damages are, what is the, the limit now for small claims? $5,000. So they're under 5000 They call a lawyer, and if they call me, I'd say, look, we have a small claims court. 
just for a case like this. You don't want the attorney's fees to exceed the amount that you're fighting over. You can handle your own case and we have a user-friendly court system here where you can argue your case before a court commissioner. How does that work? Yes, uh, we have about 6,000 small claims cases in a year that are filed in Winnebago County. Um, most of those are unrepresented parties and uh, they're able to come into court, present their case, uh, argue why they feel they were wronged, uh, argue why they're, what their damages were. Uh, the defendant's able to present their defense to the case and we're, uh, as court commissioners, we listen to the case, listen to both sides, uh, determine what the law is uh, applicable and then determine what would be a fair and, and just decision. And of course what makes it difficult is that these folks who are presented their case are, are angry, they know they're right, and uh, <laughs> they're yes. always right, but they really don't even know their legal theory and if they had a contract, they didn't bring it. And so how much time do you have to hear both sides? And I know you hear both sides. I've been there. Uh, and, and make a decision. This is their best theory. This is the law. These are the facts, and this is my decision. How much time do you have? We uh, schedule them for every half hour, although uh, if necessary, we'll, we'll go past that. Um, we try to give them their day in court. Uh, try to listen to what their, their facts are and, and what they're presenting uh, and then try to determine what is relevant and what uh, is uh, applicable under the law. And you do listen. I, I think that that's an important word. I think it's so important when people get into the judicial system and they have a controversy that somebody listens to them. It's often more important to them than the result, isn't it? I think it is. I think they want their day in court. They want to be heard and they want to be able to present their case to somebody and uh, sometimes win or lose they're they're satisfied if they've had their day in court uh, obviously they like to win but uh, uh, i think having their day in court is so important for many litigants well having been in your court and seen other people in your court the other thing i think is so important is that they have to get a decision and they have to know your reason for the decision and you do that as well you make it very clear why i'm deciding against you these are my reasons Yes, I try to uh, go through the facts and analyze what facts they're presenting and analyze the law and then uh, try to explain, and I try to do it in layman's terms, uh, why I'm, I'm ruling the way I am and uh, um, try to explain to them why the law is the way it is. And, and I think that gives them uh, a feeling of satisfaction that they had their day in court. I think you're right. I also think that uh, we're out of time for our first segment and we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your education, your background, your special training, and why you feel you're uniquely situated to be the, the best bet for the Branch Six and Circuit Court. Okay, thank you. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 